The Vought F-8 Crusader is perhaps best remembered for having many nicknames. Thanks to its supersonic speed and how it could safely take off even with its wings folded, pilots liked calling it the sports car of the Navy. Deck crew members fondly referred to the aircraft as the Gator, because the engine's air intakes were not very high above the ground and it had the power to suck in a man. Crusader also had a fruitful record during the Vietnam War. After shooting down 18 North Vietnamese MiG-17s, it earned the legendary label of MiG Master. And since it was the last US fighter designed to carry guns, four 20mm autocannons, the F-8 is also remembered with the nickname The Last Gunfighter. The Crusader was built when the United States wanted to show off their air superiority. And although history has sometimes neglected the F-8's role in favor of valorizing the F-4 Phantom, this fast and deadly jet is still considered one of the most remarkable aircraft of its generation. The Crusader was such a beloved aircraft that it inspired its own saying. When you're out of F-8s, you're out of fighters. After the Korean War, the US Navy decided it needed a fighter jet that could carry 20mm autocannons, as standard machine guns were proving no longer sufficient in aerial combat. In September 1952, the Navy announced a requirement for such an aircraft capable of landing at 100 miles per hour or less. Vought, led by John Russell Clark, presented the V-383, later acknowledged as the F-8 Crusader. The aircraft had a powerful Pratt & Whitney J57 turbojet engine that produced 18,000 pounds of thrust. This made the Crusader the first fighter jet in the U.S. arsenal, able to climb straight up and reach a speed of 1,000 miles per hour. The plane also had a long range and could fly through any weather possible. Most notably, the aircraft had a variable incidence wing that pivoted by 7 degrees while landing, which gave it a higher angle of attack without compromising forward visibility. The Vought F-81 over other designs like the Grumman F-11 Tiger and McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom II. On March 25, 1955, test pilot John Conrad took the aircraft on its first flight. During that maiden flight, the aircraft exceeded the speed of sound. Thirty days later, after a seamless development process, the second prototype also had its first flight. Prototypes of the aircraft immediately started setting records. In 1956, Navy test pilot R.W. Duke Windsor and the Crusader broke a national record after flying at a speed of 1,015 miles per hour. On June 6, 1957, the aircraft covered 2,200 miles from the west to the east coast in only 3 hours and 28 minutes. That same year, aboard an F-8U-1P version, Major John H. Glenn performed the first supersonic flight from California to New York. This journey took 3 hours 23 minutes to complete. Manufacturer Chance Vought also worked on the prototype of the Crusader III, which would become a successor of the F-8 program and a competitor of the McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom II. The Crusader III was larger than its siblings and had a more powerful engine. During its debut flight in 1958, the aircraft's performance was outstanding. However, the program was scrapped to prioritize the Phantom, which was considered tougher and more versatile. By 1957, the Crusader had been sent to the U.S. Air Force and the Navy. The Swordsman Squadron was the first team to fly the plane, which was later deployed to the Mediterranean that year aboard USS Saratoga. The F-8 was also sent to the VF-154 Black Knight Squadron, based at NAS Moffett Field in California. Despite the hope for a slower landing jet, the Crusader came down surprisingly fast. Pilots needed considerable skill to land safely. Aircraft carriers would often be sent barreling full steam ahead to help lower the relative landing speed. Takeoff was also fast and challenging for pilots, who had to wrangle an aircraft so powerful that it could get airborne, even with its hinged wingtips folded up. As pilot Don Fraser said, quote, There were no simulators in those days. You strapped it on and hope you had it all right. The jet was a favorite amongst pilots, but commonly suffered hydraulic fluid leaks and electrical system breakdowns. 
All this gave the Crusader a higher mishap rate. From the 1,261 aircraft that were built, 1,106 were involved in accidents. The airplane could also be intimidating for the ground crew, who nicknamed it the Gator. Crawling down the engine intake was a scary experience for the workers, who feared being sucked in. It was also positioned quite low. Crews were explicitly told to avoid venturing in front of the plane. Jet mechanic John Borey recalled an incident in which he grabbed a pilot by his ankles as he was getting sucked in by the air intake. The aircraft was top rated amongst pilots, who liked calling it the Navy's sports car. As General Jack Daly, director of the National Air and Space Museum said, quote, everybody who flew that airplane loved it. Mechanics were also fond of engine runs thanks to the powerful afterburner of the plane, which only had two settings, on and off. This could give it an impressive and uncontrolled explosion of thrust that had deck crew members constantly on their toes. Six years after its introduction, the Crusader was sent to the front lines of the Cuban Missile Crisis. In October 1962, the plane was part of Operation Blue Moon, which consisted of low-level photo reconnaissance missions over Cuba. Twice a day, the F-8s would fly from Key West, Florida, to Cuba and back, for the film to be immediately developed and sent directly to the Pentagon. Through 160,000 images taken by the plane, the U.S. confirmed that the Soviet Union was setting up immediate-range ballistic missiles on the island. Later on, they also documented how the weapons were withdrawn. The pilots of the aircraft were eventually honored with distinguished flying crosses. The squadrons received the U.S. Navy unit commendation. It was March 1965 when President Lyndon B. Johnson sent U.S. combat forces into Vietnam. Early on, the Crusader became the dominant aircraft as it annihilated the MiG-17s of the North Vietnamese force. The F-8 excelled at dogfighting, a quality that differentiated it from all other aircraft that flew over Vietnam. The Crusader also carried 32 unguided Mighty Mouse aerial rockets and an additional two guided AIM-9 Sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles. These qualities even bested the F-4 Phantom II, which wasn't armed with internal cannons and hadn't been specifically designed for maneuverability. The Crusader was faster, lighter, and could fly longer distances. As historian Barrett Tillman said, quote, only the F-8 could be called a true air superiority fighter. The aircraft carried the best kill ratio of the war, four MiGs for every two losses. Only four victories were won with the plane's internal cannons. The rest were achieved with its AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles. The F-8 was extremely lethal against the Vietnamese aircraft, bringing down 19 MiGs during the war. This earned the aircraft the nickname, the MiG Master. The plane also served the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps during the attacks against communist forces in North and South Vietnam. In 1965, the plane was used for Operation Flaming Dart, which consisted of a series of airstrikes against Viet Cong bases, as retaliation for attacks against U.S. Air Force bases and a hotel that housed American citizens. Rear Admiral Bob Shoemaker was flying low on an F-8, while attacking barracks a couple miles away from the demilitarized zone. Shoemaker's plane was shot down, and even though he survived, he was kept as a prisoner of war for eight years. During the conflict, 170 Crusaders were lost. The F-A didn't only have a successful story serving the U.S. armed forces. In 1962, the French army ordered several F-8s, which needed to be modified to fit their smaller carriers. The aircraft was also modified to carry two French Matra R-530 infrared missiles. The Crusader served through the 70s and the 80s, but was involved in only one combat interception with two Yemeni MiG-21s. In 1983, F-8s escorted the Dassault Brigade Super Etandar fighter jet on its combat missions over Lebanon. They also served the French Evo Navale in missions over the former Yugoslavia and the Adriatic Sea. It stayed in service until the year 2000, 
when it was entirely replaced by the Dassault Rafale twin-engine plane. The aircraft also served the Philippine Air Force from 1977 to 1991. The government purchased 35 second-hand F-8 from the U.S. Navy, which agreed to train the Philippine pilots. Ten planes were used for spare parts. In 1998, the rest of the aircraft were grounded due to the shortage of parts needed to fix the F-8s that got damaged. The jets were officially retired and sold to scrap after they sustained damage during the eruption of Mount Pinatubo in 1991. In the 70s, NASA selected an F-8A to install a supercritical wing, which reduced the effective shockwaves on the upper surface. However, the wing increased the operation costs, and soon after, it was considered impractical. A modified version of the Crusader was also used to test a digital fly-by-wire control system currently used by space shuttles. Following the path of its outstanding career, the Crusader helped NASA push the frontier of flight. The Crusader served in active duty until March 2, 1987, when the last of them was sent to the National Air and Space Museum. The F-8 was the first Navy fighter to stay in service for almost two decades. Even when it wasn't involved in air combat anymore, the jet served with active light photographic squadrons. Nowadays, this legendary aircraft can be found in museums and private collections. But the Crusaders are continuously overshadowed by the F-4 Phantom, which was less agile than the F-8, but also faster, more powerful, and more adaptable. The F-4 also doubled the operational life of the Crusader and was retired in 2016. However, from the beginning, the Phantom had been designed for interception and engagement with missiles. In contrast, the Crusader had been made specifically for dogfighting. Today, the F-8 is remembered as the last gunfighter since it was the last U.S. fighter designed to carry four 20mm autocannons as its primary weapons. It's also considered a remarkable aircraft that had a fundamental role in some of the most important conflict of the last 50 years.